Hello. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking about the closest pair problem, which is basically, um, <clears throat> for example, if you have a bunch of xy coordinates, a bunch of points, and a plane, um, finding the two that are closest to each other. And um, the way that I'm doing it here, I'm just generating a bunch of random points, and uh, and then you know putting it through the algorithm to figure out which which two are the closest and um, so I'm gonna go through the brute force way to do that which is basically just comparing each point to all the other points and then we'll go into a more efficient divide and conquer algorithm for that. So here we have a bunch of points that were randomly generated 100 points for this and the brute force algorithm is basically where we iterate through all the points and compare each pair of points. Um, we compare each point to all the others um, and calculate the distance between them using the Euclidean distance, which you can see here on line 48. Um, so we go through the points, checking each pair of points and calculating the distance. We keep track of this, which pair of points has the smallest distance and update that as we go, and then we return that as the smallest pair of points. So for the brute force version of this algorithm, we just go through the points in two for loops and compare each point to all the others. Um, calculating the distance and returning the, you know, keeping track of which points have the smallest distance between them and just returning that. Um, so that takes in squared runtime, and we can improve on that with a divide and conquer version of this algorithm. Um, so for that, we start by sorting, we sort the points by their x coordinate, and from this, we will calculate the halfway point, which um, basically we just sort the points and then we take the length and like divide it by two and that gives us our our halfway point and the x coordinate of that is going to be our halfway value because we're just kind of drawing a vertical line um, to half the points um, and we'll be using this point in later steps as well as coming right up um, where we're going to be dividing the points into the left and the right side and we're going to keep doing that recursively, uh, calculating the, um, the pair of points with the, with the smallest distance on both the left and the right side. And then at the end, we compare and we just return the smallest overall distance. Um, so at this point, we have the minimum distance from the left and the right sides, but then what happens if there are two points that straddle that middle line um, and maybe they have a smaller distance than what we've computed on the left and the right side but we wouldn't even take those those points would never be compared with our you know dividing everything into half um, so to find out if there are points in this middle strip that might have a smaller distance we're gonna uh, calculate a center strip and then we're gonna look at the points that lie within that center strip. Um, so to do this we're gonna take our halfway x coordinate and then the minimum distance that we returned from the previous part of the, al the recursive part of the algorithm um, the minimum distance we're gonna add that and subtract it and those are gonna make up the bounds for our center strip so we have our halfway x coordinate value and we're gonna add it we're going to add the uh, the minimum distance to that, and um, that's going to be our right boundary. And then we'll take our middle point x value and subtract the the minimum distance, and that'll be our left boundary. Um, so you can see here um, you can see here the boundaries. And any then we need to go back to our points and discard anything that it doesn't lie within this boundary. Um, so, yeah, so at that point, we're going to sort, after we've discarded everything that doesn't lie within the center strip, then we're going to sort all of the remaining points by their y-coordinate, um, and there's a geometric proof that shows that we actually, we can look at, like, a maximum we're going to go through these points that are sorted by their y-coordinate, and we only need to look at a maximum of really six, but seven of the neighbors in in this new array that we have. Um, 
to see whether or not we have points that have a smaller distance uh, distance between them than what we already have. So we, we basically go through our y, our coordinates, our new points that are sorted by the y coordinate, um, and compare those to up to seven of their neighbors. And then if we find two points that have a smaller distance between them than what we computed above um, with our left and right, uh, then we'll return that number instead. Otherwise, um, if we go through the points in the strip and we don't find any any smaller distance between any set of points, then we'll just return the value that we found earlier in our uh, in our divide and conquer. Uh, so finally here, this is the final graph where we you can see you know the boundaries and then the blue points are the ones those are the the ones that fell within the strip. Um, and then in this case, uh, you can kind of see, but it's actually two green squares, but they're so close together that you can't see that it's two. Those are the two closest pair, uh, closest points. Um, so they were not in, in the strip or whatever, but, uh, but you can see where they are here. And so that hopefully explains how this algorithm works. So thanks so much for watching. That was the closest pair algorithm. Um, I think it's a really interesting one. There are just so many different applications of it. I mean, you could use like one sort of more well-known one would be like if you wanted to use it with like GPS coordinates, latitude, longitude, um, you'd use a different distance function. But I think the the concept is pretty much the same. Um, like if you wanted to find two locations that are close to each other or generalizing, like if you wanted to find the closest point to some other point or something like that. Um, so very interesting and very applicable to things that we all use on a daily basis. Um, and so I'll have the code for this up on GitHub. I went through the brute force version um, of the algorithm, but I'll have the divide and conquer version up on my GitHub as well, and um, I think the code for that really after like going through the steps, like I think the code is pretty self-explanatory too, um, but if you have questions, just let me know. All right, thanks. Bye.